What is up everyone, my name is Jasper and in this video we're going to be talking about how you can write a quality blog post in under an hour. Being able to write a lot of content in a short time span and have the content be of good quality is extremely important for any blogging business. And there are three simple words to describe why and that's simply put, content is king. So let's dive into the specifics and I'll show you how we can write a blog post in under an hour and have the blog post be of great quality. Because in order to rank in Google, uh, you can't really have a uh, one article a month publishing routine. You really need to create a snowball effect. Because it takes a lot of time for Google to rank your websites, for new sites it could take up to eight months before your initial post starts to see some traffic, it's important to publish a lot of content up front. This way Google has a lot of content that it can gauge and you can see whether your site is trustworthy or not and whether your site actually has good content. If you're just producing one or two articles a month, Google doesn't have much to work with. But if you're producing one a day or maybe say four or five a week, Google has a lot more to, to go off. Now, of course, you do need to make sure that the content you produce is of great quality because if it's poor quality, Google will simply not rank it whether you're producing 800 articles a day or zero articles a day. But there is a lot to say on the speed and the quantity of content you're putting out there. So you really just need to find an equal split where you're able to produce quality content, but you can also produce it on a regular and on a daily basis or uh, maybe a weekly basis, just as, as fast as you can. So how do you do this? How do you uh, make sure you can write a lot of content, but also have the quality of the content be great? Well, the first thing is you need to know your structure. Because the way you structure your post really will set you up for uh, success or failure. Now before we get into the structure, let's talk about arguably the most important uh, factor in writing your blog post, and that is your research. What I always do is I just take uh, 20 to maybe 30 minutes beforehand to just really immerse myself in the topic. So for example, if I'm going to write about how deep a pool in your backyard uh, should be, I'm really just going to look up other people's articles, I'm going to look up videos, and maybe even call a lot of specialists and ask them the question. This way I already have the answer, I already have the specifics and I jot these down in my uh, draft. So after maybe 20 to 30 minutes, uh, you could take even longer if it's a uh, very difficult topic or if you're writing a very large blog post. But usually 20 to 30 minutes should be uh, sufficient. Now once you've got your notes in your article, uh, it's time to start structuring your article. And what I always do is I start with my intro paragraph. Then I have a section that's going after the snippet and then I'll have a read-on section, something to entice the reader to let them know I have more to share. So from here, what most people will do is they will just uh, write the content, the bulk of the content, the subheadings. But what I always do is I make my subheadings beforehand. So I have my short intro and my uh, read-on section. And from here, I'm going to structure my post. So I'm going to uh, create the subheading. So going back to the pool uh, depth example, maybe the first subheading will be something like, uh, this is how deep a pool should be in your backyard. And then we'll have subheading number one, which is the most important one and should really tie into the main uh, topic of the article. I usually just follow the main question, the title of the article, and then have that in my subheading. And after that, you really got to start looking at uh, what would the reader want to know more. So one of the best ways to do this is to just think of it for yourself. Like what is a, another question? Maybe you've come across several questions in your research that you did beforehand. But if you don't really know what to write about uh, or what people will be asking more, the easiest way to go is to just type in your question into Google and just scroll through the results. So here we are in Google with how deep should a pool be? This is uh, the topic we used as an example. And then you've got a people also ask. Uh, this section right here is in Dutch, but it, in English it would say people also ask. Uh, and from here you can see some uh, similar questions. So what is the best depth for a swimming pool? Uh, well, that's probably what we wrote in the first subheading. So that's not really one we should go after. Then what's the average depth of a pool? This is something you could do, although it's not really tying into the topic too well. Uh, here's a good one. Is a six foot pool deep enough? This is probably something people will also ask. And another one, should I put a deep end in my pool? Um, I'm not really a pool expert, so I'm not too sure what this means, but if it's something that ties into the topic and it's something that's actually relevant to the main question, uh, just include it. And to go even further, this is where you have your related searches. Uh, again, it's in Dutch, but this is the related searches uh, part. And here you can see what people are also looking for. So how deep should a pool be to dive? This is a great question, probably something you would want to know when you're making a pool. Uh, pool depth for jumping, again, great question. Uh, swimming pool depth recommendations, this is something we're writing about, so it should be great. 
uh, profiles. Uh, this is just a very simple way how you can uh, find new topics and find your subheadings. Now, why do I write the subheadings before going into the content itself? Uh, there's a very simple explanation for that. Writing 1500 words for uh, a very simple question such as how deep should a pool be it can be extremely difficult. And maybe if you're a seasoned writer, you uh, can actually pull this off without any problem. But for most people, writing 1500 words on a very specific question could be very difficult. Now, that's where the subheadings come in. Because if you've got five subheadings beforehand, uh, suddenly your post will turn from one 1500 word post into five 300 word posts. So you can really just section it off, which will make it a lot easier to write. Writing 300 words on a certain question is much easier than writing 1500 words on a certain question. And that really is my main tip, because if you got to write 1500 words on a uh, certain post and you have your first subheading and you're writing, say, 500 words on the main question and you've incorporated all the follow-up questions uh, subconsciously in the text, it's going to be extremely difficult to write those other thousand words. But right now you've got a structure where you have 300 words, 300 words, 300 words, 300 words, and another 300 words. And this way you can just write some smaller blog posts which will just make it a lot easier to go through. And this will really speed up the process as well because writing 300 words on a certain topic is just a lot easier. And once you've got everything set up, it's time to actually write the text. And because you've got it sectioned off and because you did the research and because you got a understanding of the, the question, you can just fly through this and of course make sure you have everything on point so your grammar is good, you have a nice flow in your text and the content is actually accurate. But it will just be a lot easier to just fly through the content and this way you can just really speed up all your uh, article writings. Now once you're finished with your article, it's time to spruce it up a little. And with sprucing up, I just mean uh, make it look more appealing. Bold some important parts, uh, add some quotes, add some pictures, add some tables or graphs where they're fitting. And just make this post the overall best answer and best piece of content on a certain topic that there is on the internet. And one more way you can make sure that you have the most accurate and best piece of content is doing original research. This is something that uh, is becoming more and more important. And original research basically means that you uh, actually go out and you, you're calling people. So going back to the pool example, you're actually going to call uh, people that install pools. And once you're on the phone with them, you're going to ask them the question uh, that you're writing about. And this way you got an answer from an expert, someone who's actually knowing what they're doing. Uh, and in some other cases, uh, for example, buy, you can't just really buy a pool, but if you're talking about a certain product, it's best to just actually go and buy the product. If you have the product, you can test it, you can see how it's working, um, and you can always just send it back afterwards. But having the product in your hand is just so much better. You can write so much more information on the, on the topic when you're actually having experienced it. So that being said, this is how I managed to write blog posts in under an hour. Now, of course, take into account that under an hour is probably for your smaller articles. If you're writing two or maybe three or two, 4,000 words, Writing it in under an hour is probably not going to happen, basically because it's just way too long of an article. But overall, these tips are really just going to help you speed up your writing, uh, whatever topic or whatever length your article will be. So if you've enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.